My son has always been my normal, you know. I've, I don't have any other children. He was he is my first child. So what I'm dealing with is normal to me. I have a disability that cannot be seen. Not all disabilities are seen. I don't walk with a cane. I'm not in a wheelchair. But when I'm in pain, I am totally down, down, down. Sometimes you look at people and think that everything in their world is okay. Um, and sometimes we tend to mistreat people because everything on the outside looks fine. But it's always good to be understanding and be kind to people because you never know what they're going through. Happy International Day of Persons with Disabilities. My name is Carrie Webster and I'm the mother of a handsome, energetic boy named Kaylin. My son is autistic and he's been diagnosed with autism for about four years now. Autism is a developmental disorder characterized by difficulties with social interaction and communication, as well as restrictive and repetitive behaviors. Before my son was diagnosed, he was he showed all the telltale signs of a child on the spectrum in which he had minimal eye contact. He didn't play with children his age. He used toys inappropriately. And he, at many points, he didn't respond to his name. I've gotten so many comments of, you know what, why don't you go away? Why don't you go to England? Why don't you go to America? And you know, my research that I've done basically is that you should try to do I think the personal approach works better for me. So post diagnosis, he has improved so much. Right now he reads, he writes. He writes better than some of the children in a high school that I teach. He, he interacts with other children his age now and eye contact is, is amazing. My name is Kenny Terwan and I suffer with trigeminal neuralgia. I've been suffering for the last three years. What is trigeminal neuralgia? It's a chronic illness that affects the head. It's worse than a migraine headache. It is where the artery and the nerve, the trigeminal nerve, is rubbing against each other and it causes sparks throughout the head. So basically, I'm having pain at the top of my head, the middle of my face, and the bottom of my jaw. And that pain sometimes triggers other nerves in the body, so sometimes I am pain throughout my entire body. The thing about me is I'm a fighter, I'm a warrior, and I always say if I give the pain power to take control of my life, then I would be in my bed forever. So I take control of the pain and I go about my daily chores, fight back, take medication, the medication that I was prescribed, I have to take medication every day on time. If I don't take the medication every day on time, then it's a total mess. Growing up with, um, growing up with sickle cell anemia I was always the sickly one like a lot of people would be like oh don't give this to Dan Roy or don't leave Dan Roy do that because he can't handle it and that really affected my self-esteem. Sickle cell anemia is a red blood cell condition where the red blood cells are not healthy enough and they don't carry sufficient oxygen throughout the body so in my condition, what would happen is, is that if I'm extremely fatigued or if I'm dehydrated, I would experience something called uh, sickle cell crisis where it's extremely painful and I would need some really strong medication, for example, morphine, I would need oxygen and I would need immediate IV fluids just to cope with the pain. And if the pain is not treated fast enough, um, it could be detrimental to my health and even my life. Um, but what I do on a regular basis is make sure that I'm rested, make sure that I'm not overexerting too much energy, and don't feel guilty for not being as productive because it's, it's something, if I just keep going, 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 
to the point where my body can't take it. So taking sufficient rest, drinking a lot of water. Water is more important to my body than any form of medication. One person's experience with sickle cell anemia may not be another person's experience. So for someone, they may not be able to do certain things, um, whereas another person may just get by fine. Um, but a person that lives with this condition oftentimes go through self-pain, um, where, whereas they're in pain almost all the time, but nobody would know because pain has become a part of them. So they've learned how to like wear a mask and just keep pushing through it. I believe that I could do anything once I put my mind to it. Um, so with being treated as insignificant, I've learned to, I've learned to just um, live above the norm and do all that I can. So for example, I'm a preacher, I'm an author, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a budding businessman, I do graphic design, I do a little bit of videography, I'm a music producer, and I'm a Christian rap artist. So whatever I put my hands to, I go at it with the mentality that it's not going to master me, but I'm going to master it. Historically, when we thought about mental health difficulties, we thought about disorders such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and personality disorders, which could be easily seen. These would be people that might be unemployed, they might display alcohol abuse or drug abuse behaviors, and these were disorders that we considered the mental health issues. However, there are many mental health issues that are that can be considered more invisible. And these are in fact the more common mental health difficulties. So mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety. These are more common than a lot of us think. In fact, in the UK, there is a statistic that says one in four people at some point in their life will experience a common mental health difficulty. This is to say that within your household, within your job, within your friendship group, at least one person will be experiencing depression or anxiety at some point in their lives. And this is why it is important for us to be kinder to each other. We have grown up in a culture where we try to basically downplay our emotions, we don't speak about them, and this might discourage people from letting you know what they are experiencing. But taking the extra step to be kind to somebody can help them through what they're going through, even if they don't directly say it. Even though these mental health difficulties can be considered invisible, there might be some signs and symptoms that you can look out for in your friends or family members that can help you to recognize that they might be going through something. These might be changes in their mood, they might isolate more from you, they might appear more irritable or agitated, and they might change, there might be changes in their sleep habits and appetite. Just noticing these small changes and speaking to them about it can really help them to recognize that they might need some extra assistance. Happy International Day of Persons with Disability. Happy International Day of Persons with Disabilities. So don't pity me, just share this video and help raise awareness. Happy International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Keep pressing on. My name is Lavelle Nance, social worker at the Department of Social Development, working in the unit that has responsibilities for persons with disabilities. Today, December 3rd, we celebrate International Day of Persons with Disabilities under the theme, Not All Disabilities Are Visible. These invisible disabilities can include mental health challenges, learning difficulties, and chronic illnesses. These are just some examples of disabilities that may not be visible. However, we should be reminded to remove barriers that affect persons with disabilities in general and those that may be invisible as well. One of the best ways to raise awareness for persons with disabilities is via social media. So why not share this video today as we celebrate International Day for Persons with Disabilities. This message is brought to you by the Department of Social Development and what we do in Angola.